<laughs> nothing. What? No, you just said it funny right now. You, you said the skinny dad here. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, show it through again. Hi everyone, I'm Guinea Dad. I'm Angelique. So today is Guinea Dad Podcast Episode 5. And the topic that we're going to discuss is guinea pig poop. 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 <laughs> Why is that weird too? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, when it comes to guinea pigs, guinea pigs don't show their illnesses very well. They're not going to tell you they're hurt or they're not going to scream or whatever. So it's really important for you to watch out for their poop condition. So that's what we're going to talk about today. It's not like they're like dogs or cats, like they're not gonna throw up and they can't tell you if they're sick. So you really need to be observant over their poop. For some people, it might be a difficult thing. I don't know if you're easily grossed. Are you easily grossed out by poop? Not at all, oh, yeah, no. actually. I'm not either. I feel like oh, I've had a lot of pets in the past, so I'm not really grossed out by poop. But for me, what gets me is like throw up. So throw up. <laughs> throw up. Oh, throw ups. Yeah. Yeah. So like I don't know. I might be. I mean, I hope it doesn't gross you out if you have a pet, because it's just something you're gonna have to like yeah. kind of deal with over yeah. time. It's just you know nature. So. Yeah, it's just normal. It's like uh, when I, I went camping when I was. I don't know. If, did you have to go camping when you're in middle school? With like other students. Yeah, because I feel like that's a thing, well at least like um, for a lot of like middle schoolers, they do this thing, I don't know if you guys do this, if you've ever done this, but um, usually when you're in middle school, they take you camping for a week and they teach you about nature and stuff. And I remember like one of the songs that we learned when we were camping was about scat, which is like poop. What? Scat. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So they, can, they try to teach you in a playful way about like poop and like, um, yeah, I remember that. I don't know why that stuck in my brain, but... It's like a weird memory that stuck to me. So, did you have to do camp camping too? No, no, no. I, I've never done camping when I was in middle school. Actually. Have you ever done camping though? I've done camping on my own, but that really? was about it. I was just thinking about my middle school days and I was like, what did I do? I can't think of a single thing. Really? Yeah, my middle school years, it's just completely Bondi? gone from my memory. No? That's probably the only, only, the, one of the only things I remember because I remember liking it so much when I was younger. But then I went again when I was in high school because you get to like um, be the counselor. Like oh, when you're in high school, you get to choose to go again, but as a counselor. And I went again as a counselor and I hated it. <laughs> I wanted to come back. I remember like when I went as a kid, there were so many kids that were like homesick and they're crying and stuff. And I was so happy to be there. Like I loved it so much. But then when I went again as a high schooler, I was so homesick and I, I was the one crying. So maybe camping isn't me, but. That, that sounds fun actually. Yeah, I, I don't think I've been to like that kind of activity or school like it was just like a single day trip or we, we didn't even go anywhere you didn't go on any field trips when no. you were in middle school no i mean we did but it wasn't we didn't sleep at any places we just um, came back on the same day every single time <laughs> yeah but um yeah so getting back getting back to the topic, <laughs> got um, topic <laughs> i think the to be honest like you know dog poop smell Right? Because like dogs is omnivorous like us, you know, they can eat meat, fish, vegetable, whatever, right? That's true, yeah. So all mixed up with it. So it smells like, you know, cats the same. Like cat eats, they're carnivorous. So they eat meat, fish, whatever. So cats smells, really smells. Actually, their urine smells crazy too. Mm -hmm. But anyways, but I feel like, maybe I'm biased, but I used to be a dog owner. And then when I started having like guinea pigs, I felt like their poops like, don't feel dirty at all. They're just like small pellets. No, that's true. And they're hard. They don't smell. I mean, I don't think they smell. Yeah, I remember the first time I um, I saw tofu and dumpling, and uh, I remember thinking like that their poop didn't really smell that much, which was weird. And and I think too it helps that like their poop like it's solid. Yeah. And I feel like when you have like dogs, sometimes it's not like their poop isn't solid sometimes. So like I think that grosses me out sometimes too a little bit. But it's harder to clean up too. Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh man, actually this is another random thing. But when I used to have a Siberian Husky, mm -hmm. I back then when I was in middle school, that this was back in 1997 or six. Dang, I, that's, I, I was only a year old. <laughs> So this was back in the days uh, when I used to have the dog and then back then we there was no such maybe there was but we just came to United US mm -hmm. right and then we there we didn't even I don't think it existed I don't think peep had existed 
doggy pads. Wow. So, like everything was all DIY, and then what we used to do is, you know, this was back in the days when everyone got the paper newspaper,、mm. right? So we used the newspaper to like lay it on the ground, and then like they would poop and pee on it, and、yeah. they would clean it up every day, right? But you know, they don't. They sometimes miss. <laughs> so some of the pee would like leak out, and then some of the poop might be on the edge of the newspaper.、Yeah. You know, so it requires you to like clean it up a little bit. But yeah, I remember it's their pee smells, their poop smells. You know. That kind of reminds me too. When I used to like,、um, I used to potty train my dogs when they were puppies. Have you had to use pee pads and stuff? And then they were actually really hard to potty train because I had two at once, and they were both puppies. And like I remember, I forget that like I would I would have pee pads in the hallways. I get up and I I would just like walk around half asleep, and then I would like step on the poop bag like,、oh, that's poop, isn't it? And then I turn on the lights, and there'd be like poop like on the bottom of my foot. I'm like, oh my gosh. Was、really? it warm? Yes,、uh, and obviously I didn't get mad at them because they're puppies. They're still learning. I mean, eventually they got potty trained, so it was like nice once they were potty trained. But I remember like that's something I remember having to deal with. So I'm sure with guinea pigs it's not the same because you don't have to really step on their poop. Even if I do, like it's hard anyway. You know I know. I, mean? I remember like sometimes when like we would be filming and then、um, C would be like cleaning the cage and then like you're just like picking up. <laughs> you're just like <laughs> moving things around. Like no, I would just pick it up with my hand. Yeah, you're just like unfazed by it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, that's something I don't think dog owners can do. Or maybe some dog owners do do that. I don't know. I mean, were you grossed out? I'm like, I'm not gross, grossed out unless it's like, like diarrhea or something. But like, it still smells like right, right. regardless. Right. But I mean,、so. guinea pig poop like it's so easy to pick up. It's、so、just tiny, like、yeah. and hard. Like you don't get anything on your finger either. So it's like. Yeah. That's true. Anyways, we. Talked about a lot of random stuff already. <laughs> yeah, going back to the topic again. So they hide their illnesses very well. So you guys have to make sure you look at their poop every day. And also, whenever guinea pigs have illnesses, because they're so small, things spread so quickly. So things can go bad very fast. That's why we have to keep it, you know, keep up to date. Like you said, you know, vomit grosses, grosses you out. Yeah. But. You know, guinea, guinea pigs don't really do that either,、mm-hmm. so it's really hard to tell. I think you need to be very observant of their poop, but I feel like that might be kind of hard. If you have your guinea pigs on different bedding, like、um, wood chips or paper, because it hides the poop. I, I think we mentioned it on our you know previous podcast. You know, whenever guinea pigs poop or urine, because of the way you know they shuffle and go go down, so it's going to be difficult to catch those illnesses in time. Anyways,、uh, so let's let's go over you know different types of poop. So the first type of poop is、um, small dry poop. Usually, when your guinea pigs poop dry poop, that means that they could be dehydrated. Guinea pigs are actually very prone to dehydration. You know, we always have to make sure. I mean, I think I've said it a couple times in the podcast before, but you have to have. At least the number of your guinea pig for the water bottle. If you have two guinea pigs, you need to have two water bottles at least. If you have three, you need to have at least three. So you know this kind of makes it easy for them to drink. And dry poop is not going to be easy to detect, right? Because you're not going to be watching them pooping like on the spot, right? And then whenever it touches the bedding, touches the guinea pig liner, it's going to start drying, right? But being Being smaller than usual, that's a bad sign to take care of. So that's that, and dehydration could be one of it too. But also, if your guinea pig doesn't eat eat much, which is also extremely bad sign, then it can create like no poop or little poop as well. I've seen this,、um, you know, for Pina when she was really sick before she passed away, and this was like the first sign that I had to kind of get.、Um, Get behind. So this is really important. As a guinea pig owner, you have to encourage them to drink a lot because of the reason I mentioned. And one of the things is make sure water is clean. If you can provide filtered water that you drink also, then do so. Guinea pigs eat their own poop, right? And they eat hay. And when they use the water bottle, some of that stuff in their mouth is going to travel back into the nozzle. So you have to make sure you guys clean the nozzles very often, and then water bottle very often. And make sure they know how to use the water bottle as well. 
that could be the reason why they're not drinking water. If you're the new owner, you know, don't just assume that they know how to use the water bottle. If they're not drinking enough water, maybe try giving them vegetables that have water in them, like cucumbers. Cucumbers like mostly, mostly water. Yeah. So, you know, that's a really good way of hydrating them. So give them some vegetable with the high water content. That helps. The second type is the tear shape. Tear shaped poop is a problem, and it's not always a serious problem. I would say smaller poop is a bigger problem usually. Yeah. Because a tear shaped poop, you'll see time to time whenever you give, you might, you may give like a little bit too much veggie that day. Uh, some people try to save money by giving them um, portion amount of hay, which is which is not recommended, right? So if they don't eat enough hay. Uh, they don't have enough fiber in their system, then they might have some gut problem that could also lead to something like this. Yeah. The next type of poop that we're going to talk about is um, clumped poop. I don't know if you guys all watched uh, live recent weekend, but I actually saw this clump poop right during the live, and I was like, who is it? Is it dumpling or tofu? Dumpling or tofu? So I just like kept watching them until they poop, and then I found out it was dumpling. After looking at this, I was thinking, okay, what can I do? Because a clump poop is very, very unusual, right? So it could be the sign of something bad. So I had to make sure if it doesn't get good, like within a couple hours, I, I was gonna go to bed. You know, I was watching the diet and then I was making sure she drinks enough. I kind of held the water bottle to, so that she has enough water. And I would do that right next to the hay. So all she has to do is turn her head to eat hay, drink water, eat hay, drink water. Yeah for a couple hours and then <clears throat> the poop got better so there is no more clump poop after that single period of time but when it comes to dumpling she is more than six years old now so their muscle on the butt is kind of weak yeah that's why you could have some clumped poop um, yeah i was about to say that like if they have clump poop it could possibly be a digestive issue or it could be the fact that they're Old. Um, old, yeah. If dumpling was like only one year old and if she, if she showed that, then I would actually be more serious about it. Mm -hmm. But now that she's kind of old, you know, I'm suspecting that this is a problem that I may come across time to time. It's always very similar. It's about either dehydration or gut problem. And gut problem is usually because they're not take, intaking enough hay or some type of fi high fiber food. You know that for um, dogs to check if they're dehydrated, like pinch their skin a little bit, like lightly. And Wait, their, it... their butt skin or? Oh, no, the normal no, skin. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so, that's so random. No, pinch their skin like on their like head or something. If it goes back into place fast, then that means they're hydrated. But if it stays like that, then that means they're dehydrated. That's actually true for a human too. So if you pinch your skin and it doesn't go back, then it doesn't go fa back fast enough. That means you're dehydrated. Oh, okay. That's, That's actually sense. true. I, I told you I went to Amazon with couple, two of my friends, mm -hmm. right? And you're dehydrated. Yeah, actually all of us are dehydrated yeah. because we, all we have was one bottle and then we got stuck at some place. So we're all dehydrated and it was super sunny that day, super hot. One of the kids um, got dehydrated, so dehydrated as soon as we arrived at the camp, he started throwing up everything. Right? No. And then, you know, me and the other guy were dehydrated, probably like heat stroke or like burst of heat stroke. So we drank a lot of water when we arrived because we ran out, right? During the time, like, I, I thought about that pin, skin pinch thingy. Yeah. And then it would literally just stay, stay oh, like shoot. that. Did, did you get grossed out when you saw that guy throw up? Did you get grossed out by throw up? No. No? I, I used to. I used to, like, um, when I used to, when I was in college, I guess, like, you, know, you see people throwing up all the time from, from drinking, right? Uh, during that time, when I, when I see someone throw up, because I'm drunk too, I would throw up too, because I'm gross. <laughs> when you saw that guy though, you didn't feel nothing? No, no, I mean, after a while, you just get used to it. I think that's part of getting older. Nothing is, nothing phases you. I used to work at uh, a family dollar and I remember out one time I was working and this uh, this girl came in and it was a girl I went to high school with and so we were talking and stuff and she she just had a kid and she was telling me about her kid but then um, you know she she was still talking to me and then her kid went like walking down the aisle by himself and then he like threw up like all over the place and then she was oh I'm so sorry 
like, I'm so sorry, I'm like, I'm so embarrassed. And she just started like cleaning it up like nothing. And then she was like, oh, like, you don't have to worry about it. I'll, I'll clean it up. But like, I knew I had to clean up because like, I worked there. So I couldn't just have her clean it up. I was like, so amazed by like, how like unfazed she was by it. She was just like cleaning up like nothing. Yeah. And I was telling her like, how are you doing that without getting like, sick and she was like oh when you're a mom you don't get grossed out by stuff like this anymore yeah you see that all the time and i was thinking like dang that's cool yeah you just get used to it because you just experience more things and then you just get used to it and it's not new anymore you know i get into conversation a lot with my friends who are also like mid-30s right mm -hmm. we're all talking together and we're all like oh, you know what are you excited about and everyone's like nothing <laughs> dang it's depressing <laughs> so it's just like you know, your, your emotion when you're young, you know, you're, it's always a lot of ups and downs, like roller coaster. You don't think I'll be into video games when I'm in my mid 30s? You'll be into it. I mean, I, I still play video games, <laughs> but then you won't be like, ha ha ha, it's so fun. But now I'm like, I'm just playing video game, like watching YouTube, looking at the work email, just like. So, anyways, that has nothing to do with guinea pig poop, but. <laughs> <laughs> The freaking podcast was like this, and then it was like... <laughs> <laughs> I think I make everything depressing. Right. <laughs> Not like the last podcast, too. The fourth type is the green poop. And this is actually good um so whenever you see something green you know, it's not bad in many times your guinea pigs just going to eat it and it's not bad for guinea pigs to eat those poop it's actually it's actually part of what they're supposed to do because these poop all the nutrients they they haven't been absorbed by their body so they're ingesting it again so that they get the rest of the nutrients in there so this is a very very common thing so don't be surprised by it if your guinea pigs eating poop and be happy, happy about it yeah i remember when you told me that too i was like amazed by it when i saw like dumpling and like tofu do it i was watching this animal channel um many years ago and um, i think it was like the dog whisperer guy so this dog had a problem of eating his own feces the dog whisperer was essentially saying that the only reason he's doing that is because his digestive system wasn't very, I mean, absorbing all the nutrients out. That's why the poop still tastes so good to him because it's not like empty thing that has been already processed. And the reason that dog was doing that was, and that dog was having problem is because dog was eating too fast because he was competing with another dog mm. and then he would eat faster than he can process. So that food won't be fully processed and it would just exit. That's why he would just eat it again. And just remembering that, I think that kind of relates to guinea pigs too, right? Yeah. But it's not that guinea pigs are eating too fast or whatever, but it's it's not fully processed. It's still it's still appetizing to them. <laughs> you have your own show, the guinea pig whisperer. <laughs> I'll be speaking guinea pig. I know. <laughs> That's a little weird. No, I wouldn't do that. But anyways, um, <clears throat> poop. So next poop. The next poop is smelly, soft, and mushy poop. Right, so this is, um, you know, verge of diarrhea or diarrhea, mm. essentially, right? And it's actually also pretty bad. It shows a bad gut problem. And a lot of times it's because of not enough fiber. So making sure they have enough fiber is very important. It could be the fact that they don't have enough of other nutrients. So making sure their you know, diet is balanced is very important when you see something like this. When it comes to soft, slightly soft, slightly mushy poop, it's okay to adjust their diet to make it better. But if it's straight up diarrhea, you have to go to a vet. And if they're not eating, then you can always sprinkle like supplements into their hay, so, like spruce it up a little bit, and that can kind of encourage them to eat more. I feel like with all pets, if they stop eating, that's something to worry about. So always make sure your pets are eating. So the next poop is bloody poop. This is probably <laughs> one of the worst ones listed here, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, they might have some cuts in their stomach inside. Mm -hmm. They might have some serious inflammation. So they might have like cancer. You, you don't know. So if you see a bloody poop, you need to go to a vet as soon as possible. I'm not sure if this is for all the vets, but a lot of the vets are kind of busy, right? So it's usually the receptionist who's gonna pick up the call and they try to give you know set you an appointment. You know it's part of their job as well, right? Sometimes when the receptionist 
isn't as experienced, he or she is not able to recommend you the right thing. Yeah. Right? So even if it's serious, they might just be focused on arranging time. So they might just tell you, hey, the doctor has an opening in two, three days or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. if, if that's the case, it doesn't matter. Just go. Tell them it's an emergency. And then they will do whatever possible to accommodate it. Based on what I've seen, probably more than 60-70% of the vets, they are doing that because they love animals. They will accommodate to save their lives. I have a question though. For female guinea pigs, if they get bloody urine, can that be... Um, no. You don't want to ask? Yeah, no, oh, no. Well, it's not ask. period. Oh, well, you're not going to ask that. <laughs> no, because I used to have a female dog too. So whenever whenever you see blood in urine or whatever for guinea pigs, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's uh, it's almost always like urinary tract issue. Mm -hmm. So urinary tract infection most likely. It could even be like some stones in there. Yeah, it is a serious. It's not it's not a period you know, thing. So I guess the last one is just healthy poop, right? Yep. So uh, I'm sure everyone knows what healthy poop looks like. It's very dark brown. When it's dry, it might become lighter brown, but it's brown. And it's oval shaped, smooth, uh, nothing wrong with it. And you know, it's relatively hard, it keeps its shape. So um, it's not gonna be super dry when it first comes out either. I guess it's not gonna break. Yeah, it's not gonna break either. So you guys know what I'm talking about. So um, you know, healthy poop is always what we're going for. Always check daily. Yeah, so kind of a recap of everything that we talked about. You know, make sure they eat a lot of Timothy hay. Oh, sorry, any hay. Timothy, orchard, whatever it is, they are consuming a lot of hay. Make sure you have a lot of water bottle um, with clean water and clean water bottle. And if you have two guinea pigs, two or more water bottles. If you have three, three or more water bottles. And when it comes to uh, vegetable, make sure you give them a um, you know, variety of vegetables. But I always tell you guys during these videos, they have to have at least one quarter of bell pepper per guinea pig every day. Doesn't Something matter. with water in it too would right. be good. Right, right. So that's kind of what we recommend. And lastly, make sure they exercise. For tofu and dumpling, they're free roaming 24-7, so they get enough exercises. But you know, most of you guys don't free roam guinea pigs, they're usually in the cage, right? So make sure you let them out, let them you know, have a floor time at least 30 minutes to an hour every day. And that's also better for bonding. I really want everyone to think of guinea pig as precious as any other human being, actually. So that is um, essentially everything. Thanks everyone for listening and we will see you guys next week. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs>